Ukraine fails, it's not just a failure for democracy. Everything that happens here is going to affect every other place in the world today. That's the reason that we're all so invested in this. When stakes are so high, of course we will keep fighting. Whatever it takes. Zelensky is the face of this extraordinary courage that's come up in all the Ukrainians we saw and talked to, whether they were in uniform, out of uniform, school teachers, even children. I want to protect my country, my mom, my family. The Ukrainians will win this. The question is at what cost? You were born for this moment. I'm ready to win. That was part of the trailer for Superpower, a documentary that followed Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky at the outset of the war. The film includes exclusive footage of Zelensky in his bunker on the first night of Russia's invasion. And joining us now from Kyiv, the documentary's co-director, Aaron Kaufman. He also serves as a non-governmental advisor to President Zelensky. As you can see, our guests are also working together. Uh, also with us, the uh, founder of the Lubetsky Family Foundation, Daniel Lubetsky, which is currently running a campaign to rally support in America for more military funding to Ukraine. And we'll get to that, Daniel, in just a moment. But first, Aaron. Tell us about Superpower, the title, and the story it tells. Well, for us, Superpower started as a just a profile on Zelensky. You know, we thought that an uh, actor who became president, that that was going to be a great story. Mm -hmm. What we found was, you know, we chose the, the, the really the, the right time or the wrong time to make that movie, because as we were there, it started to become clear that that Russia was going to invade, and we happened to just be there when it happened, um, and then stayed with the story for for really the next year and a half to um, to to make Superpower. Um, but then once Superpower has come out, what I've tried to do is stay involved and and to still continue to tell the uh, the stories because they're they're still happening. Tell us a little bit about Volodymyr Zelensky. I mean, he's become a, a global phenomenon, really. Uh, people look at him as sort of the tip of the spear in terms of trying to the future of the safety of the world. What do we learn about him, especially in those early days of the war? Yeah, I think I think we were surprised. We liked him initially. We 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 thought he was great, but he, I don't think anyone thought he had the resolve that he's had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people forget that at the time they were telling us if Russia tried to come into Kiev, that Kiev would fall in seventy two hours. That was not up for suggestion. That was understood fact. Um, so the fact that he's kept that from happening for two years, I think that yeah. says a lot about who he is. And I think if we had another type of leader in office at that time, Russia could very well have control of, of all of Ukraine. Wow. Aaron, uh, you're back in Ukraine now filming for Daniel's Foundation. And here's some exclusive footage for that project that you shared with us showing Ukrainian soldiers rescuing two young children and their mother. Candy and books and you know, kind of a coloring books. Daniel, tell us um, as you bring in, and I know the two of you are working together to get more footage in, what are you hoping to do with uh, not only the footage, but the stories and the narratives that Aaron is gathering for you? Um, is this, again, all part, part of making the case for Ukraine? Yeah, it's not just me. We have, you know, Colonel Vindman, Gary yeah. Kasparov, Chef Jose Andres, Liev Shriver joining together to try to help make sure that we don't lose focus of what's going on. Because while Putin is delighted that people are, you know, now turning their eye to the very, very difficult situation in the Middle East, they've tried to uh, try already twice more and more advances. They're testing the Ukrainian military. There's a lot of concern that they're going to try to undermine all of their infrastructure yet again for the winter. And it's very important for us not to forget that all of these things are interconnected. You know, the Islamic Republic regime that's repressing the people in Iran is sending drones to help the Putin's Russia attack the people um, in Ukraine. They've had hundreds of thousands of people killed and over 20 
20,000 confirmed cases, mm. 20,000 confirmed cases of children that have been abducted, taken into Russia, and being reprogrammed to try to become Russianized, Russian and to try to then attack their motherland. This is a crime against humanity, the, a war crime that's already been, uh, the ICC should... Uh, so, Daniel, should. also let's recourse that members of Hamas were hosted in Moscow not that long ago. Um, but we're seeing also some real reluctance among some Republicans in Washington to also keep helping Ukraine. In fact, there's, you know, the government could shut down at the end of the week. One of the most contentious issues is funding to Ukraine, at least right now. The GOP is not, GOP is not offering any. How deeply concerned are you? Many in the GOP have been very clear on it. Right. Nikki Haley spoke about it very forcefully in her three debates. And I think it's very important for us to understand that these things are interconnected. It's totalitarian efforts by Putin, by the Islamic Republic uh, in Iran, by Hamas, by us to undermine democracies and to test and to divide us need to be stood up. All of the builders in the world that are trying to safeguard democracy and freedom need to understand that it's going to cost us much, much more. If Ukraine were to fall, where is this going to stop? Like, Putin has made it very clear that he has very, very bold ambitions that we need to make sure that we help the Ukrainians stand up to, to Putin, because if they do so, the stakes are very high for all of us. It's not, it's not, we're not doing it for Ukraine's sake. We're not filming this for me. We're filming it for all of us to stay informed and aware of the important stakes. Okay, so Aaron, in this next clip you filmed recently, uh, we see the operator of a bomb shelter receiving some uplifting news. Take a look. She is the one who runs this place. She organizes everything, oversees everything. And with our partner, Blue Check Ukraine, we were able to secure a grant that they're going to send to you here at this shelter for $25,000, not only to help with repairs, but to help get ready for the winter. I would like grant for you from this organization for $25,000, which... Oh my gosh. To learn more, about the Lubetsky Family Foundation's efforts, visit LubetskyFamilyFoundation.org. Daniel Lubetsky, thank you, and filmmaker Aaron Kaufman, thank you as well. The documentary, Superpower, is streaming now on Paramount+.